my cat is fat. <laughs> Somehow or another, he has figured out how to open the cabinet door where his food is stored, open a big Tupperware container, and gorge himself on the food. The veterinarian is, is mad at me because I'm keeping, he thinks I keep letting him get fat. He's a thief is what he is. And in fact, it got so bad that I put child safety locks on the cabinet and that seemed to keep him out for a while until yesterday. Somehow or another, I don't know how he did it. He figured out a way around the child safety locks. And then he locked himself in there in a big tub of food. And you might think, James, are you fat shaming your cat? Yes. Yes, I am. Except that he has no shame. Anyway, what does all this have to do with encryption, you say? <laughs> well, encryption is an attempt to keep people out of things that they shouldn't get into. If I could figure out a way to encrypt cat food, I would do it. But the functional definition here really is that we want the data to be unreadable to unauthorized persons. However, we want it to be readable by someone who is authorized. Okay, and we say usually on demand. What does that mean? That means that we want to just click on it and see it. We don't want to have to type something in or jump through some kind of hoops or go through some kind of a process to decrypt it. This is also known as transparent. Okay, should be a transparent process to be the easiest way to do it. Yeah, there are, there are methods you can use where you do have to enter in a password or you might have to enter in a special key or something like this or some kind of two-factor authentication, that sort of thing. But a lot of times it's either transparent or fairly easy to do. And yet, the encryption should be pretty tight, meaning that it's virtually impossible for someone who's not authorized to access that data to actually do so. Now, kind of the short version of how that might work would be something like this. So here is a document that I have. Let's just say it's a, I don't know, a Word document with confidential company secrets in it or something like that. And then if I were to store it, you know, this is on, it's on my computer where I'm editing it right now. And if I wanted to store it over here on this server, maybe it's a file server or something like that, then I want it to be encrypted as I'm sending it across the wire here. That way, somebody who's in what we call a man-in-the-middle attack would not be able to intercept that file as I'm saving it to the server and be able to see it in what we call plain text. That's what plain text would be without encryption or something that is in the clear is another way that we would say that. Okay. But what I can do is I can use some encryption method to be able to encrypt that data on the fly while it's going across the wire here. And I say across the wire, it could be Wi-Fi, the internet, could be anything. But as it's going across the network traffic here, I want it to be encrypted. If we are saving it via something like a web page over here, then we're probably going to be able to use something like HTTPS protocol, which is going to use transport layer security, formerly referred to as SSL or secure socket layer it's not really as secure anymore. So we usually call it TLS now or transport layer security, which is an improvement upon SSL. Regardless, now as we translate it, as we transmit it, that is, over the wire here, it just becomes gibberish. This is an official technical term, meaning that <laughs> it's encrypted and that nobody could read it. So if this person's able to intercept that traffic, they're just going to get a bunch of strange characters. And then also, how do we actually go about using encryption? What are its uses? Well, we can use it a variety of different ways. You can imagine that we've been using this on the internet for a while now. So, for example, if you go to eBay.com or Amazon.com or something like that, or even the website you're looking at right now to watch this video, cbtnuggets.com, well, we are encrypting the data. So it's being encrypted on the fly across the wire here. And again, an HTTPS protocol using the transport layer security. That requires something called certificates, which we'll talk about a little bit more later on. But they're simply participating in a mathematical function that allows the encryption to happen. And you may also use it in something like email. Now, if you're going to use a browser to check your email, chances are it's already secured on its own. But in addition, using an email client such as Outlook, for example, you could individually encrypt an, a specific email message. So if it was sensitive, you could do that. And then the person that's on the receiving end of that email would have to have a certificate with a private key that would allow them to decrypt it. Again, we'll talk more about keys and certificates and things like that later. You may also see it in messaging, such as Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, Viber, Signal. Uh, they all use some form of encryption to protect your data as it goes across the wire. 
Now, another thing that could be using this would be ransomware. Now, we've talked about that a little bit in the past, but the basic idea there is, let's say that I have, you know, a big file server, and this is the file server's hard drive right here, and we've got all kinds of data on it. Well, with ransomware, what happens here is that they will encrypt it. They can encrypt whatever they want, usually, once they get control. They can encrypt certain files and folders. They can encrypt the entire hard drive, however they want to do it, but they encrypt it. And the only way you can get it decrypted is usually you have to pay them some amount of cryptocurrency, usually, probably Bitcoin, and it could amount to millions of dollars. And uh, when you do that, then they promise that they will then give you the decryption key to decrypt that hard drive. Anyway, another way you could do it would be to recycle drives. So there are a number of different third-party products out there that do this, but even if you use something like BitLocker from Microsoft, that would also do it. Okay, so normally BitLocker will en encrypt on purpose an entire hard drive, not like ransomware, but will encrypt it on purpose, and then it's transparent. Remember I said it usually should just be on demand. You don't want to have to go through hoops or anything. Normally, you can open that hard drive. When you boot up the computer, it'll decrypt that hard drive automatically for you, and you don't have to do anything. The only exceptions to that would be if you have to recover a hard drive or if there's been some circumstance under which the encryption does not decrypt automatically on its own, you may have to step in and take a manual step. But regardless, let's say that I have a hard drive right now and I want to recycle it. I want to repurpose it or something like this. If I format that hard drive, Microsoft's format command is smart enough to know, oh, that's a BitLocker drive. So what it does is it destroys the decryption key and then it will format that hard drive, which is another way of saying it erases it. So the net result of that means that drive was encrypted and then erased. So no data can be recovered from it because there are no encryption keys or decryption keys anymore. Obviously, the main purpose of this as well is to obfuscate confidential or private data, keep it from prying eyes. But be aware of the fact that it does not prevent the destruction of data, such as just the deletion of data. I guess I'm in the way. Uh, deletion of data. So if someone sees a file, you know, sitting in a file share or something like this, and it's encrypted, but they don't have the decryption keys, they may be able to access this and say, huh, I can't open that. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. <laughs> okay. So that could still be possible. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Also, if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.